budget last year, which went on a $27 billion spending spree, and the promises keep coming. So if there's no spending restraint <laughs> in Canberra or here, is the remedy higher taxation or do nothing? Well, this is a fundamental question, and it's a question that Jim Chalmers and Anthony Albanese are going to... Uh, are going to have to confront over the course of the next year or two. We've got a very significant uh, budget deficit debt problem. And my instinct is to think that Labor will attempt to solve this on the tax side, that is higher taxes, rather than on the yes. spending side, that is spending restraint. That will be a fundamental decision that this government takes. You made the point today that the Hawke-Keating party doesn't exist anymore. And I've made the point many times here, there is no Liberal Party. I mean, the Liberal Party doesn't look anything like the Menzies Liberal Party or even the John Howard Liberal Party. Can I just ask that question again? And I mean, it's difficult for you. You work amongst these people, but I can ask the question. You can pass if you like. I mean, I see the problem being that the talent pool in Canberra is pretty shallow. We don't have people of the calibre of Costello and Keating and Hawke and John Howard. I mean, it's pretty shallow. We're on both sides. Even if they know the problem, they don't seem to be able to devise solutions and then don't have the skill or the talent to prosecute the case. Look, I think that point is essentially correct, uh, Alan. I've got no problem at all in saying that. If you look back to the Hawke cabinet in the 1980s, I mean, this was uh, a cabinet of great talent. You had Hawke as prime minister, you had uh, Keating, you had senior ministers such as uh, Bill Hayden, uh, Peter Walsh, John Button, uh, John Dawkins, Gareth Evans. <laughs> I mean, this was a cabinet that battered a long mm. way down. Mm. And well, I that's think what Bob Hawke, Paul, to interrupt you, Bob Hawke always said to me that you had to bat down to number six because he loved his cricket. You had to bat down to number six. And he always batted down to number six. We can't bat down to number six today. Well, I was just about to make that point. I mean, it's sort of fair enough to say you only need to bat down to number six. I, I understand that, that particular point. But we're having trouble these days, Alan, batting to number six. <laughs> Absolutely. How can a nation survive, Paul? on an energy policy which talks about 43% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions, requiring 20,000 on Bowen's admission, 500 watt solar panels every day, 47 megawatt wind turbines every day, 10,000 kilometres of transmission lines, and then the clapped out Snowy Hydro scheme, six years of bungled billions. Paul, is this fantasy land? Well, I'm quite pleased that Chris Bowen uh, talked about some of the details of this investment. The investment required to get to 43% by uh, 2030 is simply enormous. I mean, this is, this is one of the great industrial changes in Australian economic history. The public have got no sense of what this involves. We have this complete fantasy debate about emission reduction numbers. Let's do 40, let's do 50, let's yeah. do 60, let's do 75. It's utterly meaningless. And the point to make about the Albanese government and Chris Bowen is, OK, they've actually accepted responsibility for the consequences of their policy. So Chris mm -hmm. Bowen, as the minister, mm -hmm. is now outlining what's got to happen in order to get to 43 per cent. Well, this is going to be an enormous challenge for the country. Mm. The idea, as far as I'm concerned, that we could have some comfortable or smooth transition justifies reality. But I think this is going to be a really difficult oh, yeah. and, 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 and very troubling transition for the country. 